This video is about how and why quantum computers are fake. This might sound like a conspiracy theory to you, but I am going to show where I got my information so you can evaluate it and come to your own conclusion. Here are a couple of concepts that you need to know so that you can understand what quantum computers are supposed to be. So this is how quantum computers and normal computers are the same. Quantum computers still use the same concept of zeros and ones, or on and off, and these are known as bits. Now the big difference for a quantum computer is something called quantum state superposition. Now this is where the concept of a quantum computer starts, and ironically, it is where the quantum computer ends. This is because quantum state superposition is not real. This does not exist. So now we have a quantum bit that can be a 1 or a 0, just like a classical bit, or it can be in this quantum state superposition. So what does that mean? On one side of the spectrum, you might get an answer that sounds like it's all possibilities between 0 and 1 at the same time. Or another illogical answer would be it's 0 and 1 at the same time. In other words, how can something be on and off at the same exact time? And on the other end of the spectrum, you have explanations such as it's like a coin flip or it's a point on a sphere or a circle. Now these last two analogies make more sense to us because they're just describing analog processes or classical physics and not quantum physics. So how do we know if quantum state superposition is real or not? And that is a big problem. By definition, you can never observe this state of magical on and off at the same time. So you have to believe it's real. A very famous example of this problem is called Schrodinger's cat. Now realize that Erwin Schrodinger himself wrote about the cat being dead and alive at the same time to show the silliness of quantum mechanics. In mainstream science, it seems like they've taken his idea, turned it around, and use it as a teaching tool for quantum mechanics. So why would so many smart people believe in something that seems so silly? I'm not sure I can answer that, but I think it has to do with the belief that quantum mechanics has been proven time and time again to work. Now, my statement is that this is the first device we've ever tried to build based on the principles of quantum mechanics. Now, I realize that almost everyone's going to disagree with that. And I don't blame them because it takes more knowledge of what is wrong with quantum mechanics in order to better understand my statement. For now, think of a device that has ever tried to implement quantum state superposition before. So at this point, everything I've said can be verified by watching popular quantum computer videos on YouTube. Just realize that they believe that quantum state superposition exists. Those videos will also help explain why we're even trying to build quantum computers in the first place. One thing you'll hear about that is related to quantum computing is quantum entanglement. Now in this video, I'm not going to go into detail what quantum entanglement is because it requires quantum state superposition to be real. If quantum state superposition is not real, then neither is quantum entanglement. And finally, you might hear that we've already achieved quantum state superposition and quantum entanglement using photon particles. The big problem with photon particles is that there is no definition that exists for a single photon particle. So if this sentence right here doesn't make any sense to you, then what I can do is refer you to another video I did that will go into more detail and explain what is wrong with the photon particle. 
This is the video that is on my channel that goes into more detail about why the photon particle is incorrect. But this is not a prerequisite for understanding the rest of this video. Okay, so now I will demonstrate how a classical computer works and how a quantum computer is supposed to work. Here we have a basic diagram of how your computer performs logic. We have two bits of information that you can think of as being stored in the computer memory or RAM. These are connected by wires that go to a logic gate. You can think of this gate as being a processor or CPU. This is the output wire from the processor that in this example is just connected to an LED light. This computer has four possible states that this processor can take as inputs. The logic is based on this wire being turned on and this wire being turned on at the same time. When this occurs, it will turn on the output wire that lights up the LED. So your computer has to send in each one of these states one at a time. So let's try this out. First we have the 00, zero state and then we're going to have the 0, 01 state and you can see that this wire became electrified. Now let's have the 10 state and then let's send in the last state or the fourth state 1 1. Both wires are electrified. The processor took this input and then turned on the output to make the LED light up. That's how a normal classical computer works and anybody can understand that. This is called digital logic. So now let me try to describe what I call quantum illogic. Instead of using four separate steps to input these states into the logic gate, a quantum computer will set these bits in a quantum state superposition. Now what that means is they can be 0 and 1 at the same time. And if they are 0 and 1 at the same time, then you can send that quantum state superposition into the input of a quantum gate. This allows you to skip the four separate steps and just do it all at once. This is referred to as quantum parallelism or the parallel processing advantage that you get over classical computing. So the first problem with this is how would you ever know that these are actually in a quantum state superposition where they're both 0 and 1 at the same time? Because by definition if you look at these bits or observe them or interact with them what happens is that superposition collapses down to a classical bit state. In other words, you'll always see a 0 or a 1. You'll never see 0 and 1 at the same time, by definition. Again, the quantum computer has the advantage of sending all four states in a single step instead of sending each state one at a time. This is where quantum computing breaks down because quantum state superpositions do not exist. But let's keep following along. So you can apply quantum logic gates to this superposition of states and somehow it doesn't disturb or observe the system. And then when you decide to take a measurement, the output of the gate is just one of the possible states you don't ever have access to this superposition of all states. Now, if that's confusing to you, don't worry, because quantum computing is illogical and wrong. So then, what are these quantum computers that are available for people to use? There's a simple answer to this. They are analog random number generators. So this is the article that was written up by Google when they claimed their quantum computer was supreme to any classical computer. But what did it do? What Google did to demonstrate quantum supremacy was take a large sampling 
of random numbers from their quantum qubit circuits. And that's it. So where is the quantum computer speed up over classical computers coming from? I talked a little bit about parallelism, but that message seems to be going away since it's obviously not working. So it seems as if the parallelism is now changed to quantum speed ups come from interference. So for a beginner overview video, I can't really get into what this actually means, but realize that it still requires quantum state superposition to be a real thing. Okay, so let's move on to more about why quantum state superposition is not real. Where did this idea of a quantum state even come from? We have to go back to old quantum theory where Niels Bohr was describing how an atom works. So this is the model of an atom that I think most people are familiar with. This refers to an electron orbiting a nucleus but somehow not radiating light continuously and falling into the nucleus of the atom itself. This next one I think is more familiar to everyone. It's the idea that an electron makes a quantum leap or this mysterious jump between orbits and it jumps instantly through time and space. Niels Bohr justified these ideas basically just by saying since stable atoms exist and we can't explain this using classical physics, well then, quantum weirdness must exist. And then he spent the next decade or so trying to figure out how to bridge that gap between the quantum weirdness and everyday life classical physics. In 1925, Erwin Schrödinger created his famous wave equation that began to explain all of this quantum weirdness just by using classical physics equations. So his equation was making the right predictions for the atom and again it was doing this without bringing in any of the quantum ideas or probabilities. You have to realize that Schrodinger's equation is wave mechanics and not quantum mechanics. Wave mechanics is the opposite of quantum mechanics because this is dealing with waves and quantum is dealing with particles. This is Schrodinger's 1926 paper where his wave equation comes from. He says that the point of view taken here is rather that material points consist of or are nothing but wave systems. Right here he's talking about how this new theory can explain the electron quantum leaps which up to date have been wholly mysterious. You can see that he's not using the idea of an electron as a concentrated point, but rather it's spread out through the whole space of the atom. So the Schrodinger equation is like the holy grail of quantum mechanics, but the solutions to the Schrodinger equation are not quantum. They are wave mechanics. They are solutions that are based on classical physics math. So then where does quantum mechanics enter the picture? Right here. Max Born hijacked Schrodinger's equation and gave it his own meaning. In this paper, Max Born uses the Schrodinger form of quantum mechanics, whatever that is, and attempts to apply his own interpretation based on an idea that he got from Einstein that determines the probability of a photon. So remember the quantum weirdness of stationary states and of the electron quantum leap. Max Born admits here that the Schrodinger equation does justice to these problems in the simplest way. Again, in a classical physics manner. So what does Schrodinger think about Max Born's idea of probabilities applied to Schrodinger's own equation? In this paper, written by Schrodinger, he talks about Max Born's idea of probability and probability amplitudes, and then he gives his own comment right here, saying, 
I am averse to this conception. Averse meaning having a strong dislike or opposition to. And instead of a translation to English, we have the original German phrase right here. And so what does all of this mean? So we have one man's opinion on how he can force the idea of quantum particles into a classical wave equation. He does this by ignoring the answers that Schrodinger's wave equation gives and tries to convince us to focus on one answer that tells us the probability of finding a particle. Now I'm going to do a visual demo to show you how this idea creates quantum state superposition. But right now I want to show you another Max Born paper. It's just the preliminary version of the one I just showed you. I'm trying to point out how quantum computers and quantum mechanics both depend on this man's opinion. So after solving the collision problem with the Schrodinger equation, Max Born states right here, if one translates this result into terms of particles, only one interpretation is possible. This is the wave function, gives the probability for the electron. And this is where quantum mechanics begins. The opinion that Schrodinger's wave function gives the probability of the location for a quantum particle. This is called the Born Rule, and there's no scientific proof that it's true. And just a side note, you see this asterisk. He had to correct himself and say it's the square of the wave function that provides the probability. And one last note. Max Born wants to give another opinion and let you know that he himself is inclined to give up determinism in the world of atoms. And what he's saying here is that when you choose to use probability and statistical math that you will not be able to figure out exact locations for things in the world of atoms. Okay, so let's do a visual demonstration of quantum state superposition and tie together all of this talking. So here we have a FET simulation of waves. Schrodinger's equation describes wave systems, so I'm going to send a single pulse down the line and then a second one. I'm going to pause it right here and explain. I have a reference line set up here so you can see the height or the amplitude of these waves. And then I can step them together and show you the constructive interference that occurs when two waves hit each other. At this point in time, we have a superposition of waves and you can just think of this as waves of water. As we keep moving forward in time, the waves will go through each other and go back to their normal amplitude or normal height. Since Schrodinger's equation is designed to describe wave systems, you can see how naturally wave superposition is built right into this equation. Now, let's unnaturally force the idea of an electron particle into this equation. Now let's make this an electron and this an electron, and you can think of it as billiard balls. Let's step them closer together. And at this point, how are you going to describe these objects coming together as one? This is where you have to get creative and make something up like quantum state superposition. How can these billiard balls or electrons occupy the same space and time, pass through each other, and keep moving? And here's the answer. If you're going to translate that in terms of particles, it's obvious. There's one interpretation possible, and that is the probability for the location of the electron. So hopefully you can see that the Born rule of forcing particles into a wave equation is what creates the idea 
of quantum state superposition. In other words, a particle can be two different things at the same exact space and time. And the qubit of the quantum computer is based on this belief. Okay, that is it, and thanks for listening.